Good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of Growing in Grace. I'm your host, Chico Whitaker. Today, we're going to talk about the gospel. Yes, the gospel of Jesus Christ. The word gospel means good news. And today, this is what we're talking about. Uh, the good news of the gospel. Some of it might seem a little... Uh, uh, negative, but I'm going to put it in perspective. Precious Father, we ask that you lead us to the road of righteousness. We ask that you use us as only you can. Lord, we ask that you bless the audience that's building this program today. We ask that you heal the sick, the brokenhearted. We ask that you uh, put marriages back together that's perhaps getting ready to sign a, um, papers for divorce. Lord, we ask that you just uh, touch someone in the hospital bed and raise them up from their infirmities. Lord, we ask that you provide food for those hungry mouths that's starving and need to be filled. Bless the babies. Bless the ministers. Bless the citizens of this world that they will only do right and serve you. As the scripture says in Second Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways, from their wicked ways, then will you hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Yes, Lord, we need our land healed this day. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Thank you. Okay, the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus said before he went to heaven, and I'm reading from Matthew 28, 19. He commissioned his disciples. He says, go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Now, that's a promise that we can get next to if we only serve the Lord. Now, today, what I'm going to tell you might not be pretty. It might not fulfill the words that you want to hear. But I want you to listen to it attentively and try to uh, do the will of the Lord. I know we are bombarded by trials and temptation, but if we only seek Jesus Christ, he's the answer to all our problems today. So today, I would like to tell you, Jesus said to his disciples, go and preach the gospel. He told them that. And they did that back in the days. Now today, we have ministers, teachers, Prophets, theologians, uh, disciples, and those that want to call themselves apostles. They have big names behind them. THD, DD, Doctors of Divinity, theologians. Uh, but what are they doing to bring the word of God to every nation in this world? Why is the people getting the word out? Let me repeat this. Why is people getting the word out today? You might say, what is that, Brother Whitaker? The good news. Everywhere we look, 
is crime, death, robbery, uh, sickness and diseases, drugs, and chaos. This is all around us. Churches and church members are lying on one another. I don't know if this is happening in your church, but it's happening somewhere in the world. Children are killing uh, members of their family and sinners. And why is that? Because they are not taught the word of God. They do not fear anybody. So they do things out of malice because they need guidance. The Highland Park Community Choir sung a song some decades ago. And it says, God is going to straighten it out. God is going to straighten it out. God is going to straighten it out. He's going to straighten it out someday. Right now, we need the Lord more than ever before. And it's wicked and, toward, wicked and sinful uh, generation. The former president wants a bloodbath for being a sore loser in the last election. Lord, help us. Help this country. When we say the, a pledge of allegiance and we talk about God, are we really trusting in God or are we trusting in those that are in the White House and Lansing and City Council? And uh, uh, Wayne County, we trust in our leaders more than we trust in our Savior. Why is that? Because my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The Southern Baptists and the so-called pastors are not standing up for God. They're not taking a stand. They are serving a maniac that's one to be president. Endorsing him and his lies and bullying other opponents. Now how are you going to run America and you're going to bully the opponent because you want a seat, but you won't stand up against uh, Russia or Red China or some other uh, foreign countries that's ready to attack America. Where is your loyalty? Enough about that, though. Who will stand up for God? Will you, brother Christian, sister Christian, pastor, elder, Uh, I got a scripture for you, and it's in Isaiah 51, and I'm going to go to it because it's not happening right now. And you might say, what do you mean, Brother Whitaker? Well, let me read Isaiah uh, 58 and 1. Cry loud and spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob and their sins. Cry loud and spare not. That means you're not being scared. You're taking a stand. You're going to do what's right. When you cry, you're giving a person a warning. Some say you might be emotional. 
But sometimes when you cry, you okay. get another person's attention or nation. There was a evangelist in Louisiana, and every time he wants to raise money, he cry on the air. I won't call his name, but a lot of you are familiar with him because you send your tithes to him and his church. But a lot of you know who he is. Enough of that. I gave you Matthew 28, 19 earlier where Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Is the gospel being preached today or is dogma or certain doctrines or naming and claiming schemes or sowing seeds to raise money? Where is the true undoctorated word of God? Uh, like I said, who will stand up for God? The Bible says, cry loud and spare not. Where is God's soldiers? Acts 2.41 and it talks about those that were baptized on the day of Pentecost. Actually, I have almost a dozen scriptures, but I know I won't get to them today. But I'll just touch on some. Acts 2.41 says, Then they that were gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added to, to them about 3,000 souls. 3,000 souls was added to the church when they heard Peter Prince about uh, their sins. They came to him and they said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter stood up boldly and said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now the nation had the Holy Ghost and love and the word of God in their heart, we would not be seeing so much killing uh, being done in the world and in our neighborhoods. And they continue steadfast in the apostle doctrine and fellowship and the breaking of bread and in prayer. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that obeyed were together and had all things in common. Christians should have all things in common instead of fighting and, ba fighting and backbiting with one another. Are they silent or scared? I asked earlier, where are the b believers of God who will stand up for him. If you are a believer, you will uh, do what is right. You will cry loud and spare not, and you tell others about the deliverance of Jesus Christ and what he can do for you. Why are so many Christians taking a backseat to the enemy? Why are they lukewarm? Uh, I got a couple of scriptures for you. And this is in Revelations uh, 3.16 uh, through 17. And a lot of you already know this, that reads the Bible. But I'm going to bring uh, this to somebody's memory who is not a Bible scholar. And this is the Lord talking to uh, John about what future things might come up on the earth. And as I get Revelations 
316 through 17. I'm looking at it now. And it goes like this. Uh, well, let me go to verse 15. I know thy works, that they are neither cold nor hot. I would, I would that thou were cold nor hot. Verse 16 says, so then, because thou art neither, so then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and know not that thou art wretch, wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. This is the stage that some churches are in, mega churches and universal churches, which is the Catholic uh, church. Jesus is saying, thou art lukewarm, thou art miserable, naked. They're not putting the word of God out. Go with me to Second Peter. I'm sorry. Go to me with First Peter, five. Chapter five, verse uh, eight through ten. Um, I'm getting it now. I didn't mark it, which I should have. But a lot of you might have heard this before, and as I stroll through the Bible. Uh, I can quote it, but I prefer to read it so I won't get it mix, mixed up. Uh, I'm coming to it in a few minutes, and it's in Peter. But uh, perhaps i I uh, come back to that later. Uh, we need a revival right now. We need a revival in our nation. We need a revival in this neighborhood, in this country that we call America. Now, I want to give you First Peter and let you know what he says. First Peter chapter 5, verses 8 through 10. And it reads like this. Be sober and villager because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walking about, seeking who he may devour. The devil is busy now. He's going around. Uh trying to take you down. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions of uh, and our accomplishments, the accomplishments and your brother that are in the world. But here is what it says in verse 10. But the grace of God, but, but the God of all grace who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that, we have suffered a while, make you perfect and establish strength that settles you. Settles you. That was First Peter 5, verses 8 through 10. You might say, why did you uh, read that, Brother Whitaker? Because sometimes we need to be remembered. Uh, have ministers became cowards? Some have. We fight within our flesh, trying to do right. Uh, Romans 7, 18 I'm not going to give you all the verses that, that, 
But the paraphrase it, it says, for I know that's in my flesh dwell of no good thing. Every time I want to do what is right, that evil nature is always there. And that evil nature that we got through Adam and Eve. But Romans chapter 8 lets us know that who God be for us, who can be against us? Uh, 8 and um, 31 tells us that. Uh, I ask you, have ministers became coward? Yes, because they're afraid to preach the word of God. They compromise it sometimes. Uh, they became t cowards towards doing right and wrong. Proverbs 16 and 5, which I can't go to that right now, and tells us, For there is a way but seem right unto a man, but the end of their, end thereof are ways of judgment or death. That's Proverbs 16 and 25. Uh, today, in our world, 80% of our nation uh, let the Lord Jesus Christ down. 80% of our nation. All he wanted was our love, our worship, repentance, service, but we couldn't even give him that. And when I say 80% of the nation let the Lord down, we live for the Lord on Sunday. Monday through Saturday, we teach and preach and spew out hell. Hatred, destruction, jealousy, just to name a few. So this is how we let the Lord down. But in his unmerited favor, God sent Jesus to save this world. For uh, Roman, I mean, St. John 3.16 tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave this only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish. And it also tells us in the next verse, But God did not send his Son to condemn the world, but through Jesus Christ, you know, we might be saved. Now, in Ezekiel, I'm giving you another scripture. And this might seem like his Bible study, but I just want to get the good news out so you will be aware. Uh, be aware of God's word. And... I had I had that and uh uh here we go. Ezekiel eighteen and twenty. Now a lot of you heard this before and you have to stop doing it. It says the soul that sinneth, it shall die. This bears repeating. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteous, the righteous of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wicked of the wicked shall be upon him. So, the soul the sin of it shall die. Now, can we, can re revival bring us back uh, to God? Maybe. Uh, Proverbs uh, goes like this. Uh, Trust in the Lord, lean, on, lean not on their on understanding. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. But in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Uh, like I said, can revival bring us back? Uh, maybe if you have a pure heart. Romans 12 and, 12 and 1 says, Present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and, holy and acceptable unto God. Verse uh, 2 says, Be not transformed to this world, but with the new of your mind, which I don't have enough time to read all that. Uh, as I get ready to sum it all up, 
we know that Jesus Christ will bring us through any, any situation. Jesus said, on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. Yes, he built this church some time ago. As the churches start at the day of Pentecost, still many can't get the gospel due to politics and uh, restrictions. Missionaries are, are banned or murdered trying to get the gospel in foreign land. That's going on all over. Billions will suffer or backslide if they can't hear the, the word of God. If our gospel be hid, it is here to those that are lost. Who will speak the message of salvation? Is your church trustworthy? Or do they sell out to the Republican Party? For God we live, for God we die. I am not ashamed of the gospel. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's Romans 1, 16. The good news has been preached throughout the land. Many have heard the God's word and did it. But what would you do when you hear the good news? I ask you today, serve the Lord in gladness. Uh, sir, St. John 5.39 tells us to search the scriptures for them you think you have eternal life. Until next time, this is Brother Whitaker. You've been listening to Growing in Grace. God bless you, and I will see you soon. Thank you. Maranathus. <laughs>